Hi everyone, I can't believe this day is finally here when I will be interviewing my very own mother, my mama. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, not at all. Thank you for joining us. And I sent in a question sticker on Instagram and so many questions came back because my mom's career journey is really, really inspiring. And it has been a motivation for me and my sister, Seerat. Just get inspired by her, look up to her, how she does everything in her life, how she balances all aspects of her life so flawlessly. So, Mama, I'm so grateful that you're here today on a chit chat over chai session. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've spoken so many times about uh, your interviewing me and I'm really happy that finally I get a chance to be on your YouTube video and I have a mini celebrity status. I'm really happy to be here. Okay. So, Mama, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do right now and then we can backtrack as to how you've begun your journey. So, what is it that you do right now? So, I work for a U.S. company and the brand is called April Cornell. April Cornell is uh, based out of Burlington, Vermont. The so designer's name is April Cornell and she's the owner of the brand. I met April in 1984. So, my association with her has been an outstandingly long journey. Uh, she offered me a position in a company in 1990 and uh, I'm still here so you can imagine this is my 32nd year with her. I started her office in 1990 and uh, we've gone through a long long journey but I'm still here with her and uh, it's uh, amazing and a privilege to work with her. Thank you but what is it that you do like you said you work for a with April Cornell and you started in the 90s but what is your role then? My core uh, responsibility uh, today is uh, being involved in design, in product development, in merchandising, relationships, building relationships, nurturing relationships. And uh, I lead a team of a uh, product development team. And uh, that's the fun part. I'm in the fashion business, I can call it now. Great. So when you say building relationships, maintaining relationships, that means you're trying to get more buyers for the company. You know, uh, in business, there are two two things one has to do. One has to first get the buyers, of course. And the second very important part is how to retain those people. You know, it's, it's simple to get a one-time lead and simple to get the first order with, in comparison. Yeah. As you move forward, you have to satisfy the buyer with your work and your deliveries and your quality. And the real success is when they keep on buying, keep on buying. And that's what you call nurturing a relationship. Do you think that's the best part of your job? The relationship part? I don't think that could... It's a core part of my job. But what I really like is that, like, let's say we work with across 20, 30 buyers. Everybody's doing different things. Everybody has a handwriting of their own design. So for me, what is really interesting is to see across the board. You know, we have some customers from Australia, some from Europe, some from the U.S., uh, some are catering to a younger audience, some are catering to the plus size. So it gives me so much uh, insight and exposure to what the fashion market is today. What are the different kind of customers? And that's what I think really keeps me going because it's not the same thing. It's not just working on one Excel. You know, every day there's something new. So what kind of products are you designing? So um, we do a large range of ladies' apparel. We do a beautiful collection of girls' wear, kids, infants. We also do a large line of home furnishings, soft home furnishings, where we cover bed linen, kitchenware, and uh, table linen. So really also the really fortunate part of my job is that I just don't see clothes. I also see clothes for the home, you know, so that's, uh, it's a great uh, exposure. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So how did you get into product development, design, merchandising? And, you know, how does one get into this field? So um, it's a very uh, eventful journey for me. Uh, my dad, actually, I'd like to give my, we were five sisters, we have five sisters. And uh, my dad was very, your nanaji was very visionary and he said that um, I want to educate all my daughters in such a way that they would be capable of standing on their own feet and being independent. Now, in the 70s and the 80s, that was a very rare uh, thought process of a father. Everybody just wanted to get their kids married and girls especially and we were five of us. So I would say that I learned a lot from my dad's vision 
And I think that's what I try to do also with you and Seerith. In fact, like even our dad is like that. Yeah. yeah. And we are fortunate that, uh, you know, Deeti Deep, is like that too. Yeah. So I finished my schooling and then uh, graduation was important. And that's what I really wanted to do. Well. I did fairly well. I got into Miranda House. I did history honors there. And by the way, Miranda House has been... Uh, has ranked number one college in India. Number one women's college. Wow, that's amazing. That's cheers to Miranda House. <laughs> and to all the Mirandians who are in Miranda House or or I have been. So I finished my history honors and, you know, very many times post. So your three years is really busy. And post the three years, really, like, you don't know what to do. Uh, so with history honors, you can do, you know, majors in history, you can get into politics, you can get do an economics thing, you can do various uh, social type of courses, art related and all. Uh, I wasn't really keen to pursue that field. and But I always had this knack of wanting to dress up or wanting to buy clothes or not expensive. But style clothes. Style clothes, style look. Look good. <laughs> And I think I have the same dreams. I love dressing up and putting a good outfit together. Shopping. And we love shopping. So I finished my history honors and I had actually one thought in my mind, should I do law? Okay. And then it was by chance, one of my friends called up and said, hey, Harpreet, what are you planning to do? And I said, oh, I'm thinking of doing law. Don't be silly. Law is not to think to go into I'm joining a fashion course. Why shouldn't you? So, um, and in fact, uh, that was really, uh, so at that time, now we have many international colleges. We have the NIFT. Uh, but at that time, NIFT, I think they had just about opened up at that time. It's too and, new. Uh, it was too new and I probably wasn't even aware of where and what was. So there was a Polytechnic or the South Delhi Polytechnic. It's truly my alma mater as far as this profession is concerned. And my really my aim is to one day go back to them and tell them, hey, if anybody's watching this, invite her for a talk. So we did a, I did a one year course there, and uh, the course was um, quite interesting. We had you know four, five different, six, seven subjects related to the parallel industry. When I finished that, I knew I had found my mooring. I just knew this is the business and this is the industry that I feel that I want to be in. And at that time, uh, late in the 80s or beginning 80s, I would say, uh, the apparel industry itself in India was just about booming. And there was a lot of opportunity for young women uh, to get involved in the fashion industry, in the apparel industry. And the day I finished my course, I think I must have interviewed in three three different organizations. The day I finished my course, I had a job in my hand. So I think, uh, yeah, that was my journey. Very humble. And the company I worked with is now one of the top companies. And uh, But I got a job and uh, that's where I started. So one of the questions that we got from the audience was about how when you were starting your career in the late 80s and the beginning 90s, there were not many women, uh, female leaders to look up to. Um, not many women were working and there was a little bit of patriarchy that women were expected to, not a little bit, there was full-on patriarchy, uh, that women were expected to sit at home and take care of the children and have babies and take care of the in-laws and probably not contribute the financial aspect but the emotional aspect. Um, so how did you deal with probably being the only woman who was working in your social circle or um, getting up in the morning, finding that motivation to leave your kids at home and going to work. Um, how did you deal with that? What was going on in your mind in those early years of your... So I think what is one of... So there are many aspects and many things contribute to, you know, how you do and how you face your career. The most important thing is to have belief in what you want to do. Unless you believe that this is what you are looking for in life, uh, other influences can change you and uh, waver you from your goals. I was always very clear that uh, that my life would be dual. There's the personal side of life, which is a very core part of my life even till today. And there's the professional side, which has uh, made me the person today that I am today. And so... 
right in the beginning, I want to tell you and I want to tell everybody, yeah. unless you believe in what you want to do yourself, I mean, nothing will happen. Once you start manifesting that this is what you are looking for from life, doors open up. You meet people, you know, I was very fortunate. I met my partner, Jiti, uh, and uh, I was just amazed. And we had a completely arranged marriage. And, uh, you know, I remember meeting him and saying, look, I really want to work. And he said, yes, I think you should. So I think that was a very turning point in my life that I found a partner uh, that was very supportive and encouraging. And I think there is a rare man at that time also. You know, many men wanted their wives to be home and be taking care of their uh, the person side of life and that they would be the earning only a bread earner of the family. I've also always lived with your grandparents, you know, yeah. and I have to give credit to my father-in-law. You know, Daddy Ji was a superbly different, supportive, uh, uh, like a father figure in my life because I lost my father very early. Um, and I, so I, there was an atmosphere created, you know, in my home to support me, my career and the family life that I always looked out for. Uh, I was fortunate. I worked with a foreign company. We had great work-life balance. I'm not saying that I don't didn't work beyond working hours, but that was only possible if I was at home. Uh, I tried to balance, and I think I uh, was well noticed that Mrs. Sindhu leaves the office on time. Uh, I had uh, always a reason to rush back home. You know, my... Uh, you and Sirat both have played such an important part in my life. And I, I've gotten so much love from both of you and so much admiration. And thank you for that because I think that is a great motivation factor. When you're recognized with your efforts in your career that is outside your home doors and you come back home and people are waiting for you and want to know what, how was your day, you know, and, and they look up at you and they, they respect you. Uh, for what you're doing and I think that uh, that was very very I would say um, lucky that I had an atmosphere at home um, my family life was always as important to me as my career was and you know I have often just got out of office and said today I'm picking up my and see them from school taking them out for lunch shopping with them holding your fingers and going, walking through GK market, mm -hmm. yeah. going to McDonald's, that was, used to be a big treat. Mm, uh, and, uh, you know, then dropping you home and going, rushing back for meetings. Uh, I have, it's been tremendous, you know, the support that I got from home, the respect I got from GT, the admiration I got from both of you, and uh, the success that I found in my career. And that's what makes me what I am today. How oh, nice. And do you think that there is a financial high that one woman gets when there is a salary that's being credited into their bank account instead of, uh, you know, dependent on someone else to um, hand you those cuts in your pocket money? Uh, was that also like, and did that play a role, you know? In my career, mm, uh, there were two important things. One was that I was not in a boring job because it was a job that I loved to do. And uh, luckily, uh, the remuneration that was growing within the industry uh, was uh, um, balanced out with the kind of work you gave and did for the company. So working with April uh, was very intense, but it was part of the company culture to to be acknowledged with because of your contribution to the company. So coming back to your question, is is money important? I think part of your uh, the confidence that comes from your career is how much you are gaining financially. And uh, if anybody says that the money part is not important, is probably not talking correctly. You may have other sources of income, but if you are in a career that you love and you are in a career that you're giving your really your your hundred percent to you want to be financially rewarded and I uh, you know I, I've been earning since I was 21 22 and uh, I think money is important 
very important okay uh good that's so great uh, motivation and um, i think i completely agree with you that uh i'm sure it would have been challenging that you were the only working woman in in your social group or you know around you like picking up me and see that from school there were not many other women coming and rushing from the office but what you said really resonated with me is that you said you had a hard stop at 5 pm for example yeah, right i did so it's important to also have set those boundaries early on in your job because if you don't communicate it to your boss they would never know that you know you do actually want to go home and have a lunch dinner or cook dinner maybe go out for dinner with your family so it's important to set those boundaries early on so that you are not taken for granted as well right um and yeah i think that's what you did like uh, think also what if that the kind of support that i got now today i mean it's a women oriented industry you know i have maybe 25 women working with me in 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 the in the whole uh, group of product development and merchandising team and when somebody comes to me and saying ma'am i need to go home today my daughter is not well or ma'am i need to get take take some time off because my mother was admitted in the hospital it completely resonates with me because i've gone through that and i can feel empathy sympathy i want to give them support you know and said yes those are important things as well so please do please do balance your life please do because personally uh, life is as important as your career i feel of course that varies for different people for some people maybe you know work is their only motivation because maybe things at home are not that great or or maybe for some people personal life is more important because they are in a shitty job for example i think well yeah i think you got a good balance got- of both and i'm not saying that i'm not taking the credit away from you because you've been talking about your support system i think you should give yourself credit as well is that you is that you had that drive within you to keep going right uh, you wanted to hustle uh, it was probably in your blood i guess right not everybody is as driven and and and, and i think don't don't not get any to yourself no i i but I, i do want to say one thing i mean i've been working for um such a long time um uh, both of you are married now um you have your own lives and you're building your own life personal and professional but still even today at 5 o'clock i have a time well i love my home it beckons me to come home i have a life Uh, I like to be home as well so yeah I think how oh, nice yeah. yeah so it's a balance then you have to maintain the right balance that works for you whatever balance works for you okay great so if there is somebody in maybe you know 30 years ago like if somebody is 30 years younger to you starting their career right now today uh things are different now most women are working or at least want to be working for the first half of their careers maybe then later you know after you have kids life changes etc different motivations for different people again but what would you what would you say to somebody who's 20 21 today and wants to get into this industry what is the one advice you would give to your younger self yeah i think to the younger generation uh, not specifically who want to get into fashion uh, just people who are looking and have yet not discovered their career path Uh, i also think that uh, it's okay if you try something and it doesn't work out and it's okay to try another thing if it doesn't work out eventually something will come from within i have known people uh, i in fact i just met somebody yesterday who's had a successful career for the past 15 years with a corporation and now is rethinking her career path you know so that type of thinking is much more available today in our in many years ago first of all finding your own career was a key part uh, lots of girls got into teaching you know because oh what do you do oh i'm going to be a teacher used to be the thing lot of indian girls said beta aap kya banoge main teacher banungi i don't know if you remember thinking when i said that in my childhood that i want to be a teacher when i grow up so uh, and today we are lucky india is such a growing economy i mean you see women all over i mean the chan the rock that was sent to the moon like they were they were women scientists i mean you see you feel so proud really proud of where the indian women have um, moved forward um and i'm sure a lot of them 
lot of pe people watching this have uh, fought battles of their own to be able to be successful in their fields, you right? I still, so I'll tell you a funny incident. So uh, I remember um, a time when uh, you were just born and at those times, you know, we didn't get long maternity leaves. So I think that's the topic that one should really also talk about. So we barely got one and a half months off. And I remember that uh, I was post, I think you must have been three months old or three and a half months old. And uh, I had gone to work and um, Jiti ko Papa called and said, you know, she's running fever. And I was very traumatized. I mean, you were my first child and you were fever and I was at work and had a biased meeting. And I just don't know. I just went to my boss and she was a lady boss also. And I said, look, my daughter's running fever. I have to get home. And she was very supportive also. She said, hey, please, just don't worry, go home. And I had tears down. I was driving my car and I jumped a red light. And I didn't see, because I was in a rush to get home. And there was a traffic policeman right there who flagged me down. And he walked towards the window side. I had tears streaming down and said, he said, you just jumped, aapne red light jump kariye. And I said, my son, mere bachche ko bukhaare. And he just looked at me and I'm sure he must have met other people who, uh, you know, give excuses for jumping in life. <laughs> but he just looked at me and said, Aap ko hai? Ham jau. Madam, ham jau. Ham jau. Ham. And he didn't chill on me, he didn't find me. And uh, so, you know, you, there, uh, there are times when you build, when you're building your family and you're working and, uh, you know, so both parts are so close to your heart, you know, your career and your kids. There are times when you feel, are you on the right path? You know, how do you balance? You know, are you doing the right thing? And uh, um, so those are questions that also come in uh, in mother's minds, you know, whether you are doing the right thing. And at my time also, uh, it was very judgmental, you know, she goes to work. Oh, her kids are taken care by the maid. Oh, you know, look, she's not going herself, uh, holding the child's hand, taking her to the tuition. You know, so there are things that uh, people can really um, not be so kind, yeah. you know. And I remember having a conversation with you and Seerath and Papa together. And I said, I told you that, look, you know, I'm a career person and I'm very proud of it. But I don't want anybody telling me that my girls are not well brought up, not well behaved, not well educated because I, I was working. In fact, because I'm working should give you a bigger window of what you want to do in life, you know. So I, that also comes with my own conviction, you know. I could have just said I don't want to work when I had seen it. But uh, again, it's a journey of your own heart and your mind and your brain and uh, you get through it. You know, we, you'll get through it. Everybody gets through it. I've got through it. And I'm really proud of that. Coming back to your question about uh, me being a rare person uh, in, uh, in terms of working women. Tell you the truth. I had 10 friends. I was the only one working. Today, I have 25 friends. Everybody wants to do something. So there's definitely, you know, uh, a, a change in the mindset of even women who have now settled their kids or my friends who are having daughters. There's nobody who's not doing anything. Everybody is doing whether they want to be a makeup artist, whether they want to do something on social media, whether they want to launch a line, whether they want to do home, whether they want to be anything, mentors or whatever, NGOs, you know, I think there's a great change. And uh, now when I'm sitting with that those bunch of friends, 10, 15, 20, I have a lot of friends. They all look up at me and they say, wow, Hanpreet, wow, you're so lucky you're working. Now we have nothing to do with, you know. So it's, uh, that's great. Yeah. I think you talked really well about the mom guilt yeah. factor because yeah. I'm sure a lot of, uh, I was reading the statistic that uh, said uh, in the UK, 73% of women do not go back to full-time work after they have babies. Um, and that's a very high number. So that means full-time work they don't want to do. Nobody wants to do a 9 to 5, like 73%. So they either make it part-time or they become freelancers or, you know, they start their own thing. So it is it is a very common emotion amongst women who have children. Um, and I'm sure you felt that mom guilt 
every day, every other day uh, to confess. That it's a struggle. It's a mental struggle and it can bog you down mentally and you sometimes doubt yourself, you know, are you doing the right thing? And uh, you have to have your conviction and finally, whatever choice you make is the right choice for yourself. You know, giving up or doing part-time, there's nothing wrong in that. Or balancing or taking a few years off or two years off or a year off. There's nothing wrong with that. What I think is important is for you to keep asking yourself, what next? You know, what next is very important. Eventually, your kids will grow up, they'll go to school. So make sure that you do have something that belongs to you. you know, that's just yours. That's very important, I feel. And it can be whatever it can be. Yeah. You do you, basically. What, and there's no right or wrong. And Yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, you know, everybody has their own uh, judgment and everybody has their own scenarios. Everybody has different support systems. Everybody has their own financial, uh, you know, responsibilities. Everybody also is allowed to have changes within yourself. You know, at one time you can say, oh, I love what I'm doing. And then, you know, five, seven years later, you said, maybe it's not, this is not for me. Yeah. You know, maybe I need to, your mind can change. Or you can say, oh, I want to upskill myself, you know. Do something else, something new. I think what is important is that your own mental growth and your own your own self, uh, independent of other things that are so beautiful also in your life, is it's very important to keep in mind. Lovely, lovely. So tell us a little bit about the industry. Like how does, not just women, if there's a man watching this, like how does one tap into this industry and what are the three three ways you would define this industry uh, for someone who's just starting you know maybe a NIFT graduate or a Pearl graduate yeah. Like, yeah so I think uh, all the institutions today NIFT, Pearl and there's so many other you know Amity and there's the, there's so many you know uh, there are so many government backed organizations also who are teaching passion today uh, I think if anybody who wants to join our industry has to make sure that they do a course, you know. Just... No, you just can't stumble into. Yeah. It has to be, it's very different now. Then you have to get the correct training and the correct professional uh, mm -hmm. backing uh, because that's where your starting point is. Choose your college well because not just go to anybody. I mean, you do your research, work hard, uh, you know, make sure that you're applying to the right colleges uh, and uh, you get an edge start as soon as, I mean, I've interviewed so many people and as soon as I recognize in the resume a particular college or a course that a particular candidate has done, I automatically go towards wanting to meet those people and learn from them what was the course like and, you know, how does that help them. So I think starting point is to get yourself professionally qualified for sure. The second thing is uh, you've got to learn and you've got to climb your way up. You know, I think unless you know um, the nitty gritty and unless you get your hands dirty, doing a course is fantastic. And these days the courses are of course much better than the course that we did. They give you a lot of practical knowledge. But the hands-on experience of working in an organization, a manufacturing company really teaches you a lot. So get an internship during your yeah, college. Yeah, get, 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 get a good internship. And don't worry if the internship is not paying you. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of interns who come and say, oh, ma'am, what will you pay us? Uh, so it's good if they ask you. Nothing wrong in that. But that's not the criteria. I, you know. So get an internship. Watch uh, YouTube videos. You know, uh, Even if you have to work in a store, you know, get to know your customer. Yeah. You know, do some, you know, learn on the job, do some design courses. The, you know, a lot of it is now tech-based. Uh, you know, at one time, for example, pattern making was all scissor and brown paper. Now it's all paperless, it's all on the computer. So upskill, keep on upskilling yourself. And uh, I think one I think I'd like to say one thing is, if you get a job, don't just quit in six months. Uh, give yourself time. You owe it to the organization who's training you up, you know. Um, and don't say, uh, so I'll, very often I've asked people I've interviewed um, and people who are just 26, 27, and 25, why, what's the reason to change your job? Uh, I want to change my job because I want to learn. So the substance is good, you want to learn more. 
but I think that every organization has a lot to teach. So be patient with yourself, with the organization that you have joined. And, uh, you know, um, don't be in a hurry to change jobs. I think minimum two years, two and a half years is, is an important time to really learn something. And if you find something good, Hang on for four years, you know, and see what your growth is there. So learn on the job, get a course, um, and do internship. Just don't quit when when things get tough, you know. Just stick around. And also, uh, what you said, something about you know tech being a big part of your industry now. So I feel that anybody who you know holds on to that new wave coming up on of about tech. Um, can probably be the leader because they will know these things that other people don't know, right? So ride the wave when it's new and fresh, right? Yeah. Now. So, you know, like uh, we, in my generation, we were not really tech-based. And uh, yeah, so we we were just faxing at, the fax was this, then the emails came and we've all learned on the job. You know, I've learned a lot of the, um, the computers and the Excels and all that. But there's so much more in the tech, in the fashion industry now. Yeah. The, you know, you can, you don't even have to make a sample, but there's a software that can visualize your look of a design on a template. And it just, and the model just walks in and you can see it. So there are all so many different things have uh, happened. And yeah, I think it's very important, the tech part. The tech part the is tech important. has taken over every aspect of the in the, our industry as well. So I think that's very important to keep in mind. And what if somebody wants to start a business of their own? Because we got this question a lot. Like you have been, um, I would say, like an entrepreneur within your organization, right? Even though you were not running your own business, you were running somebody else's business for them. Um, so if somebody were to launch an apparel's business today, what is the top advice? that? Yeah, so I think uh, it's a great business to get into. But I think it's not something that is good for somebody who's in 20 or 21, you know. You need to learn. You need to gain experience in the industry. Minimum 5 to 10 years of learning. Unless you know yourself, I think it's very important that you know the business yourself before you start a business. Uh, because uh, uh, you are the major contributor and the major vision behind what you're starting up to. So I think... Uh, Maybe while you're doing a job, make a business plan, look at your, you know, what your look is going to be. Is it going to be for the domestic market? Is it going to be an export industry? Is it just mom and pop shows? Are there caps, fashion capsules? There's so much what they want to start with is, is you know, starting an export house takes a long time. It's, there's a lot of responsibility that goes into it. But you could start to do smaller things, yeah. pop up shows, design your online, show it to your friends and family, and do keep on doing a job, and then collectively for five, seven, eight years, round off your experience, and then think of starting something that is uh, bigger than what uh, you are in at this moment. Okay, what is the one final tip that you would give to somebody? who is watching this right now, feeling like they don't have a purpose for their career or they feel um, demotivated to uh, just, you know, do something in their life. And uh, whether that's a woman or a, or a man or anybody else, uh, what would you say to them if they feel lost right now? Yeah, so that's a very good question. I want to tell everybody that this is also part of life of being unsure, being in that phase of your life where you don't know what you want to do. Um, there's no book of life that you open a page and you read it and you say, I've got it all. Life is a journey. There are times when you are unsure. There are times when you really don't know what to do. There are times when you're down and out and you just think like, you know, nothing in life is going to happen. Please have faith. It's part of life, part of the process of life. Um, the one person who can really help you is yourself. So be patient with yourself. Talk to yourself. Find out what you want from your own self. Make a list. You know, I know you've always spoken about <laughs> wanting down your thoughts and, you know, making a journal. Right. That's a, a very important uh, 
uh, aspect that can help you clear up, you know, write your top 10 things that upset you and the top 10 things that make you happy. Yeah. Whether it's your personal life or your, your professional life. Mm -hmm. And the day is not far where you'll know what you really want to do. Be patient with yourself. And okay. create a lot of opportunity for everybody. That's such a nice message. Oh, this has been quite overwhelming for us, I'm sure. <laughs> There'll be a lot of edits in this video. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm sure there is so much that one can learn from you even beyond this interview. Um, so I have decided to launch my mother as a mentor on our platform. And uh, if you do want to chat with her one on one, you can sign up for a session with her through the link below. And uh, hopefully you'll find it useful. And yeah, it I would love to. Uh, so I, I think, of course, because of the age bracket that I am in, uh, there's a lot of experiences in life that one goes through, uh, not only related to the fashion industry that is a core part of my life. But uh, general uh, mentoring or, you know, telling if I cannot be of any help, I would love to help. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you Momo, for joining me. Today. I love you. Love you too. May you bloom like the roses here. <laughs> and you too. <laughs>